All right, we're back with you on the Art Lewis Show here on WSGW. As I mentioned to you, the former congressman, Peter Meyer, has uh, declared for the seat held by Debbie Stabenow, who is retiring uh, after this term in the U.S. Senate. And uh, Mr. Meyer is with us this morning. Former congressman, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? We're doing well, thanks. Okay. Why are you running for Senate right off the top? <laughs> put, to put it simply, uh, I'm frustrated that I don't hear candidates right now talking about how we're going to make sure that by 2050, we're in the middle of the next great American century. I don't hear folks outlining a bold vision for where we need to go, uh, let alone laying the groundwork and helping folks understand how it is that we actually get there. I just see folks who are caught up so much in the day to day, caught up so much in, in whatever the crisis of the moment is, that they're unable to start to lay the solutions so that we can escape this moment. We're just lurching from emergency to emergency, crisis to crisis, and feeling the uncertainty that's all around, whether that's around economic and fiscal issues, whether that is just our, our safety and security fears here at home, or you know the broader perils of a world that seems to be getting more dangerous by the day. So I'm running as somebody who is a believer in long-term solutions, who tried to work on those in Congress, made some progress, uh, and want to continue that job in Washington again as the next senator from the great state of Michigan. Let's talk about that elephant in the room, Donald Trump. Um, he was, as it turned out, your nemesis in re-election uh, because you were one of those who voted to impeach. Uh, and now you're running, of course, without his endorsement. Not likely that's going to happen. Uh, Stranger things have happened. Well, I mean, yeah, I, that's we'll true. I'll, I'll yeah. grant you that. I've never met the man, so I'm, I'm not sure. You You represent right now what is a very divided party. That's not exclusive. The Democrats have their issues, too. How do you reunite the Republican Party so everybody's rowing in the same direction? Uh, I think that's a great question. I mean, I uh, when it comes to the former president, obviously, I had a very dramatic departure and difference with him in terms of <laughs> January 6th. I think that is understandable and, and well known. Um, I think I what I dislike about this moment, and I think this is where uh, both parties are having their issues, but it's especially pronounced on the right, is that it becomes an all or nothing proposition. Uh, if if you're on the camp where you like somebody, you cannot criticize them or say a word different or else you're you know an apostate. Uh, likewise, if you dislike somebody, you can't give them any credit when they do something's right or else you're given aid and comfort to the enemy. Right. And that's I think that black and white approach is not reflective of reality. It's not reflective of people. Um, I spend time, you know, I've been I voted very critically against them in the past. I've spent time defending that guy. Uh, I think there's things that are occurring uh, in terms of the, the Democratic approach um, just here in the state of Michigan moves to block him from even being eligible to appear on the ballot that I think are wrongheaded and set a dangerous precedent. Uh, now, in the best case scenario, you give everything, everybody something to like. The worst case scenario, you give everyone something to hate and finding their way to uh, uh, to condemn. But my view towards the Republican Party right now is a healthy party can have disagreements. You know, if you have a disagreement, you can contrast that with the areas in which you're on the same page. When those disagreements become division, you know, that is a wrench in the gears that prevents you from moving forward. And it leaves a situation like we're in right now where folks are more than happy on the right or more comfortable on the right and excited to attack other people who agree with them 95 percent of the time, you know, than to say, OK, you know, as Reagan said, if if I agree with you 80 percent, you're a friend and an ally, you know, moving to the point where we view ourselves as allies who can you know, are not papering over those disagreements, but saying we don't want to shine a spotlight on that when there's so many areas we can work together on. And I do think the party's actually in a place where, I mean, it seems to be the height of division. I mean, goodness, yesterday, within 30 minutes, I got, you know, attacked from, you know, the establishment right, you know, with the National Republican Senatorial Committee coming out and skewering me for running. And, you know, um, the MIGOP, which I, I appreciate they deleted the tweet and posted, a, you know, a clarification that they will stay independent in primaries. Um, but I think the, the average Republican is getting just very tired of what seems to be games that are missing 
you know, the whole challenges around this country. I mean, where is the talk about high inflation and rising interest rates? Where is the talk about our debt and deficit and the, the Federal Reserve's response to that? Where is the conversation about what's going on in the Middle East or how we ensure you know, that we can get this country back on the right track? Right? I mean, people are tired yeah. of the drama. Hang on. I got to take a break. We'll come back, Peter. We're talking to Peter Meyer. He is a candidate for the seat currently held in the U.S. Senate by Debbie Stabenow. We will have more after these notes. Meet the dedicated team of professionals at McLaren Bay Region. They're committed to providing the best possible experience for their patients. Hi, I'm Patty Irwin, manager of the trauma program at McLaren Bay Region. I am proud to be a part of Bay County's only designated trauma center. When you choose McLaren, you can trust our highly trained staff will provide the best quality of care. When choosing McLaren Bay Region for your health care needs, you can trust that you'll be doing what's best for you and your family. This is Rachel from the SVRC Marketplace, located at 203 South Washington, right on Riverfront Saginaw. Support small this fall and warm your soul with over 30 small businesses. Retail shopping with handmade wares from this, then, and maybe. And some of the hottest jewelry trends with Sparkle Rush by Erica. Grab some delicious pho from Saigon Sandwich or some award-winning chili from the one and only Cop King. American favorites like some homemade cornbread from Myrna's or a warm pumpkin spice latte from Sips Downtown. Support small this fall at the SVRC Marketplace, open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Join us at our upcoming holiday events like our Halloween at the Market, Friday, October 27th, and calling all makers for our annual Holidays in the Heart of the City Makers Market, November 17th through the 18th. We want to know if we are reaching our community, so let us know you hear us. Find Sips Coffee Shop and mention this ad and receive a free $5 gift certificate on us and support our small businesses. We thank you for the continued support of our small businesses. Remember to shop local, eat local, support small business, and we will see you at the market. Jim Gaffigan here with some more Straight Talk. Now you can get a Walmart Plus membership, plus not pay for it, because it's included with Straight Talk wireless plans. You get free delivery with Walmart Plus, plus a Paramount Plus subscription included, plus you pay less for gas. That's a lot of pluses. Only Straight Talk gives you unlimited 5G data and Walmart Plus included on select plans for free. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart. Requires service on gold or platinum unlimited. One offer per eligible account. Paramount Plus essential plan only. Separate registration required. Additional terms apply. It's Misa in the circle, shoots and scores! Second of the game, Michael Misa. It's a power play goal. The OHL's battle for Michigan continues this Wednesday. The third chapter in the Coors Light I-75 Divide Cup will be written in the spirit host the Flint Firebirds at the Dow Event Center. The series is even at one apiece, and the Spirit are building momentum as they climb the Western Conference. Great seats are still available. Go to SaginawSpirit.com to claim yours today. The battle for the Coors Light I-75 Divide Cup rages on, and you don't want to miss a second of it. So right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care, and here's why. Not only is it open enrollment for a lot of people, it's also a time you can join MediShare and save even more than usual. For many families, switching to MediShare saves about $500 a month, which is a game changer for a lot of people. But what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the member satisfaction rate compared to health insurance. Double. MediShare is a proven thing, too. For over 30 years, it's a Christian community of more than 400,000 members. And here's the thing, too. If you join before November 15th and you mention the promo code SHARE, you'll get another $150 savings. So, I'll give you the number here in a second, but just call. You'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline's November 15th. So call now and you'll save even more. Here's the number, 877-26-BIBLE. That's 877-26-BIBLE, 877-26-BIBLE. Listen to this station anytime, anywhere on Odyssey. Odyssey is your new audio home for all the music, news, sports, and podcasts that matter to you. Odyssey, that's A U D. A-C-Y. This is the premier kitchen and bath gallery showroom and design center studios of WSGW. All right, back with you here on WSGW, the Art Lewis Show, and we're talking to Peter Meyer. He is a former congressman who is now a candidate for the Senate seat held by Debbie Stabenow. Have to ask you, Peter, if you were in Congress at the time of this speaker debacle that just happened, what would have been your position? Hmm. That's a great question. I obviously followed that very closely. Um, I probably would not have been among the 
the the rebels who voted to oust Speaker McCarthy simply because uh, at the end of the day, managing a body as with as slim a majority as Republicans have in the House. And I saw uh, that was the exact same majority that Speaker Pelosi had when I served in Congress. I mean, that's a difficult proposition. And if you undermine that, as we saw with kind of the three weeks of turmoil um, during that speaker's race, it just unleashes a can of worms that distracts from being able to do the job. Right. I think it, it, it's harder than to manage internally. So, I mean, the, I just, the ahead. shame of it is he brought it on himself by agreeing to the single voter challenge. It was a sort of Damocles, you know, that he set up as soon as he you know, allowed that. But it was a necessary I think at the time he viewed it as a necessary concession. But I mean, that's all the inside baseball, you know, um, you know, back and forth that I think can be very tiring to the outside when people say, well, what are you doing to make you know, life better for us? What are you doing about the pocketbook issues, about the affordability crisis we're having? You know, I talked earlier about inflation and um, and rising interest rates. You know, n none of this has anything to do with that, right? It's all a lot of internal personality conflicts um, that I think to the outside become very tedious. So as we sit here right now, uh if uh, Peter Meyer were to be elected as the next senator from the state of Michigan, what would be your top issues? Oh, I mean, that very cleanly put, um, you know, you have to strike a balance between solving some of the problems as they come up, but also trying to get at that underlying cause. So you're not always just dealing with the symptoms. And in my mind, the underlying cause is the fact that so much of our government policy is being dictated by folks who are not elected and are not accountable to the people. You know, that makes it harder to solve issues like that. The uh, baby formula shortage we had two years ago uh, makes this harder for us to then hold people accountable when they do something good or hold people responsible, like what we're seeing with the southern border and the insecurity of uh, the, that has come from the Biden administration just choosing not to enforce the laws as we exist. Um, you know, the a lot of those issues, right? I mean, talking about high interest rates and high inflation uh, are being spurred by out of control government spending, specifically, you know, deficit spending and the normalization of a crisis level approach we saw during COVID. So the first thing that we need to be doing to affect some of those pocketbook issues is to, you know, frankly, take some of those decisions, have outside entities like independent commissions offer recommendations that then have a privileged floor vote because nobody's going to get everything they want. But if you can start to move that needle in the right direction, you can start to see that impact on Americans' lives. Um, but frankly, holding the executive branch accountable, I think the Office of the Presidency is the most dangerous institution in this country right now because of the power it can wield and the way in which it can selectively wield that power. That would be my number one priority in addition to fixing some of the underlying issues that make it impossible for us to address items like the open border, items like high interest rates, high inflation, and um, and I'm, I'm kind of setting aside the foreign policy realm because that's where you don't really have a legislative solution. You just need more sober heads in the room to try to work out what is our long term national security interest. Uh, you know, that is going to be a priority on day one. It'll be a priority on day 100 It'd be, you know, looking down the line. It always has be been. Priority. Sorry. It always it, has been. Yeah. Um, Historically. But that's where I think we've also seen, you know, the, an increasing politicization of our foreign approach makes it a lot harder. I mean, the the Democrats, when Trump was going against China, Democrats started defending China because, you know, their political opponent is uh, is attacking them. Like that type of reactionary approach, I think, uh, leads people into a lot of very, you know, weird corners that they shouldn't otherwise be in. And that's where you need folks who have a little bit of discipline, uh, who have a sense of the dynamics and don't just look at every single issue as an opportunity to exploit it for partisan advantage. All right, so let me ask you, Peter, you jumped into a, an arena that's going to be pretty well stacked with a lot of people. What separates Peter Meyer from the rest? I, I would say two things, apart from, I think, being the youngest person in this race, um, you know, by a, a decade or two. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, 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 a little bit on the surface. I think I might. Yeah, I'm 80. Be careful now. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I respect uh, I respect the contributions of uh, of my seniors. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I think it's it's that I, I've seen enough of the system to know how it works. Um, I have seen enough of that system to understand what needs to change and how to get there uh, without having been kind of co-opted by it or feeling an affinity or allegiance 
to the way and to, to preserving, frankly, a broken status quo. And I think that's what we see in a lot of races. Either you have folks who have the understanding of how it works, but no willingness to change it um, because of, of social relationships and financial inducements and otherwise, or you have people who see what needs to happen, but don't necessarily know how to get it done. And are just standing outside the gates, you know, kind of shouting and pounding on the door. Uh, you need to be able to blend the two. You know, you need the guts to do what needs to be done, but you also need to know what needs to be done in order to do it. One of the things I've said over time is uh, that politics today is driving good people from it. What drew you into it as a young man? Uh, some have said I'm a glutton for punishment, but I mean, I had, I had, I, 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 my background was in, in the military, was working in uh, crisis zones for humanitarian aid groups and disaster response. Um, I'm very comfortable in ambiguity. I'm comfortable in chaos and in those uncertain situations where, you know, you're not necessarily striving for perfection. You're just trying to do what you can to make things a little bit better um, and hope that in the absence of you, uh, that you're able to do something where in your absence, um, a, a less optimal outcome would be arrived. Um, you know, frankly, compared to Iraq and Afghanistan, DC doesn't look so bad. Um, but, you know, a lot of that chaos and a lot of that turmoil is a result of an uncertainty and a, a, a lack of, uh, frankly, of leadership, uh, a lack of folks who are willing to take what they see and what they believe and actually speak, uh, not just behind closed doors, but but to make uh, take those risks and make something that's a little bit more bold to try to shape a direction. Um, I just, I saw too many people who were more than happy to say, well, I can't ruffle any feathers. You know, I can't, you know, poke my head above the parapet uh, or else I'm going to get struck down. And so as a result, it was just concession after concession after concession um, that may have seemed like small corners to cut in the short term, but it wound up with something that I think um, you know, ends up being a moral surrender uh, and a surrender of, of perspective and of opinion that leads to that type of, to, to a political system right now that, you know, 70% of the country, it doesn't have a positive opinion of either party. I mean, that is what I came in to try to change uh, and what I want to continue to try to bring as the next senator from the great state of Michigan. Well, if you like chaos, Washington is the place. <laughs> Don't like it, but I can, I can stand <laughs> yeah, it. You can I deal can with it. it. Yeah. All right. Well, Peter, listen, thank you for your time this morning, and uh, we'll do it again down the road. I look forward to it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. Too. Bye. Peter Meyer, he is a candidate for United States Senate, the seat uh, being vacated by Debbie Stabenow. We thank him for his time this morning, and we'll be back with more after these notes. m and Garage Door wants to remind you, get those home improvement projects done now before winter weather hits. It's the perfect time to replace that old garage door with an 